Welcome, ladybugs and jelly beans, to my channel. Uh, today we're making sourdough banana bread, and you'll see here that I've got an ingredients list on the screen for you because I will absolutely forget what I've put in here. I will also link you to the website where I got this recipe from, where you should go check it out, give click views, and also read the steps properly because you'll notice, and I will try and go over what I did wrong, but I did quite a lot wrong. Um, but I will go through it all with you, uh, for you, and you can you can learn from my mistakes. It still came out really good, so I'm not complaining. Um, I'm just go to the website and read what what she's telling you to do. So here we're just creaming some banana, sugar, and vanilla uh, vanilla essence, or I'm using vanilla bean paste, and. You just want to blend it until, uh, mix it until it's all smooth. So, one thing I didn't have were overripe bananas because I wanted to make this this weekend and I just didn't have time for the bananas to get overripe. Um, so I actually baked three of them, which I didn't weigh before putting them in the oven and realized that I didn't have enough. So I ended up using a raw banana or like a, a fresh banana as well. Um, so. I baked them for an hour at about 100 uh, degrees Celsius. It got them soft enough to actually use. And keep in mind that the recipe does call for overripe bananas and the way they're telling you to weigh them is with skins on, so they will weigh less with skins off. Um, yeah, so you just want to blend that until it's all smooth. Basically like creaming butter and sugar together. A trusty spatuli because you'll need one of these. Um, I, I like a silicon spatula. You can use whatever you want. Obviously, silicon is easier to maneuver around bowls. Um, one thing I'm going to point out here is the recipe does say to <laughs> mix in an egg one at a time, combine it, the next egg, and then the sourdough starter. Uh, I decided to put it all in at once because I'm not very good at following instructions. So you do you boo and you follow the instructions or you can follow what I've done. Either way it came out fine. I haven't done it the way she's asked you to do it in the proper recipe so I have nothing to compare it to. But it came out fine for me so like I said, you do you. You just want to mix that in. Um, in, in the way I'm doing it, I'm just mixing until it's all combined. Alright, now we're going to be adding our plain flour or all-purpose flour, depending on where in the world you come from, uh, baking pa uh, baking soda or bicarb soda, and our salt. Um, again, the recipe and one of my mistakes was it said to sift it in. I just dumped it in. I didn't have any lumps of flour, so whatever. It's fine. One thing you don't want to do is over mix the flour, because the more you mix it, uh, it will become a tougher bread or cake it, it's always the case no matter what baking you do if you overbeat it it will become tougher so you can see that I'm trying to show you what I'm doing in the bowl because I've used the absolute wrong bowl for this video uh, so excuse my uh, my noobish noobishness see here my brain starts to tick over and realize hey these guys can't actually see what I'm doing so I'm about to move the camera so you get a closer up uh, closer angle so you can see here it is almost mixed in but it's not completely uh, over mixed um, so I'm just doing a low mix here and I'm about to pour in my oil and my milk so two things here it has to be a neutral oil you don't want anything with a strong flavor like olive oil or peanut oil or whatever else that may give it a flavor of its own um, and 
the milk I'm using is almond milk because it's all I have, it's all I drink. Um, I would also sometimes use soy milk, but I've been drinking almond milk recently, so that's what we've been buying. Um, you can, obviously the recipe does say milk, it doesn't, I don't think it specifies, but I just don't have full cream milk in the house, so I didn't use it, and I don't find any difference in baking when I use almond milk anyway. And you want to scrape down your sides, because you don't want any manky flour balls at the end after you've mixed all this in. And you'll also see kind of a layer of oil on the top, and it's completely normal from what I was reading, so don't stress, just on a low speed, mix it in until it's all combined and the oil is no longer a layer of oil on top. And the lumps you see here are actually banana, not flour, just so you know. Take off the beaters, I'm going to put them to the side for my partner to lick later. Um, and we're just going to give it a bit of a fold through to make sure there's nothing on the bottom that's stuck. <coughs> now, our muffin pan. This muffin pan was actually too small for the entire mixture. I did end up making some uh, muffins with them as well. So um, yeah, use whatever you have. But yeah, this pan was a bit too small. Uh, did I call it a muffin pan? I meant a loaf pan. Um, it's a bit too small, but you just want to butter it up. You can use butter, spray oil. You can put butter with flour on it. You can put baking paper, whatever you want. I've just used butter. This pan I've been pretty lucky with, it doesn't really, nothing really sticks to it, so um, whatever you want man, you do you. Baking's all fun. The recipe doesn't call for this, but I've used some banana chips uh, on the bottom and on the top, so I'm just going to layer a layer of uh, banana chips here. And of course when there's leftovers, they go in the mouth. The reason I use this bowl is because it has a spout, um, makes it easy to pour. So I'm just pouring in the mixture, get an even layer. We want it about three quarters full. Uh, it does rise because it does have the, the sourdough starter in it and it will make it rise a bit more than your traditional uh, loaf ingredients, I guess. I'm actually somewhat annoyed by what she missed back now because I could have put that on the end but I ate it because it was freaking delicious all right it looked good anyway who cares <laughs> and we're just gonna put these into some silicon muffin pans so these are quite deep I, if I use a, sh a more shallow muffin pan probably could have got a full six um, and my partner is in the background currently asking me not to uh, use it all and he does this every time I'm baking so that he can clean the bowl up So, a little loafy in the in the oven. It had been in here for about ten minutes by this point, and then I put the muffin pan and the muffins in as well. And is it just me? Am I the only person that cannot? I don't understand how people do a uh, video without a reflection on the screen. 
of the oven. Like, what the heck? This one came out pretty clean, um, but the muffins hadn't uh, weren't coming out clean yet. So I did let this cook for a little bit longer, and I turned everything around to make it a more even cooking experience for the loafy. Alright, now everything's cooked. Now we're going to get some handy dandy oven mitts on so we don't burn our finger rooties. And our beautiful banana bread. Hey, look how good that looks. I'd eat it. And I did. getting our muffins out and I don't know if I'm the only person in the world that struggles with getting a silicon muffin pan out of the oven but holy heck ugh So if the muffins get a bit sticky, just just pry them out with a skewer or a knife, or whatever you can find. Um, or you can let them cool down and they might come out a bit easier. I just don't like them steaming up in the bottom of the, uh, the pan that they're in. Then they go all soggy. And also, I wanted to eat one like ASAP, so pff, needed to get it out. We're going to try that again with the loaf and again it didn't stick, um, it just needed to be uh, assisted in order to get it out so I've given it a bit of a pry out with the skewer and then it comes out pretty cleanly and nothing was left behind so it didn't actually stick, it just needed some help. And there we go, our beautiful loaf full of steam and it was super warm so it was burning my fingers. And there we have it folks, we have our muffies and our loaf. Look pretty nice. We're going to cut one open, we're going to give her a taste. There is literally nothing better than a hot muffin with butter being all melty and delicious. So we're going to open this up and use literally what's left of the um, butter in this container. And because the knife was super warm from cutting open a hot muffin, it uh, just melted out. Not to say that I wouldn't normally use this much butter anyway because honestly, melty butter on a fresh warm muffy is like one of the bombs so I ain't even gonna pretend like I don't need to spread a little bit in on all right and using the other facing camera on my phone some reason it looks a lot more golden um but yeah that one those were my muffies and my my loaf my banana bread and this is my partner for the most part having completely eaten the entire muffin and giving a thumbs up 
If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. There will be more content coming in the future. In Melbourne, we're in lockdown, so there is literally nothing else to do. And I do love cooking and I definitely love eating. So there will be more things to come in the future. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.